Aaron must have told him that he's going to be playing at least another year after this season. He had to. Even if he did, anything can happen between now and the end of the season where he changed his mind. Because if you were yeah. Devontae Adams, you basically agreed to become a New York Jet because of the short-term convenience with Aaron Rodgers. Right. But the right. long-term, if he's not there, you basically in the same position you just were a part of with the Raiders with no quarterback. Yeah, money, 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 money. Ain't that funny? I got haters. Yeah, they watching, but I know they love me. Money, 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 money. Ain't that funny? I got haters. Yeah, they watching, but I know they love me. Riding around the city, plastic cup of sea rock. Bigger and I'm blacker. I am on that Chris Rock. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. All things cover yours truly. Patrick Peterson, Brian McFadden. Outstanding show. There's a lot to unpack, and we're here to give you all of our sentiments and opinions about what is going on in the world of sports, specifically speaking, the NFL, because once again, Pat P, the NFL, they're stealing headlines. Week in and week out, they're stealing headlines. But before we get into that, Pat, how you doing? How you feeling? What's going on with you? What's what's new? What's happening? And nothing much, Mac. Everything's great, man. I'm just chilling here on, on the pod with my favorite cousin in the world. Um, yeah, man, just living a life. Just enjoying, Golfing. enjoying my time being home with my today. girls. You know, what did yep. you shoot? Uh, man, I shot a 79 today, but I won 500 bucks, so. That was good enough. Win. <laughs> good enough. No question. A win is always a win. It's always a good thing to win. Talk about other people that have been winning today. NFL headlines coming right at you right now. Big news coming from New York, the Big Apple, Big City. The New York Jets, they lost Monday night, but they actually won the very, very next day, to say the least. Mega yep. trade, blockbuster trade. Weeks ago when the Raiders kind of, you know, flirted with the idea of potentially trading Devontae Adams, their star wide receivers, of course, the New York Jets was the first team that was surfaced as a, as a destination. Of course, because of his old quarterback, future Hall of Famer Aaron Rodgers is not currently the head coach for the Jets. But it, be, it became a reality today. The details of the trade, the Raiders will receive a conditional third-round pick that can become a second-round pick, Pat P, based on Devontae's performance. Uh, currently, the Jets, they're 2-4. They're and four. Hearing this news, knowing that it's, it became a reality today, Pat P, what were your initial thoughts when you heard Devontae is now New York Jets? Um, I wasn't surprised. I was like, about time. To be quite honest with you, watching the game Monday night, it showed that they need another dynamic receiver to be able to help Aaron. They had finally got the running game going with Brees Hall um, last night. So um, it was about time, you know, when I saw that uh, the news finally surfaced because I knew he wasn't going to play for the Raiders again. And it was just a matter of time on which team was going to is willing, willing enough to give up, you know, picks in order to acquire him. So. The Jets, you know, they're a desperate team right now. They're they're the team that made that made the most sense. They reunite between uh, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. Um, so we'll see what how how the season ended up shaking. But I will say this: the last night, the way they was able to move the football, it was just sloppy mm -hmm. football on both sides. Yeah, uh, defense on uh, defense and offense from the Bills and the Jets. Um, I think it was like two hundred and something odd yards and, and penalties. So that penalties. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I not think a recipe was for it, winning. A bit too aggressive with the flag. Right, right. Yeah. Um, but it was definitely a positive to see the mm -hmm. offense move the ball up and down the field. You just have to capitalize in the red zone. I believe there was one for four, while uh, Buff the Buffalo Bills were three for four or something like that. You know, so um, now that they have another receiver that can take the pressure off of uh, Garrett Wilson, uh, another option for uh, Aaron Rodgers, I think it just makes that offense that much more potent. Knowing that Devontae is now, he, he's a Jet. Devontae yeah. make the Jets what? Like, what does he, he it, it, we, 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 we know he improves the team, especially offensively, but what does he yeah. make them with his addition, do you think? Uh, I think they'll be a playoff team still. You know, um, hmm. that, that was my, that was my um, you know, my opinion when the season first started, even before. Um, take uh, but before the Jets acquiring um, acquiring Tay, you mm -hmm. know. So now I just think it makes them that much better offensively. Um, they still have to do a, uh, do a lot of um, 
man, uh, assignment cleaning cleaning up to do. Like it was just mm-hmm. bad football from the offensive line. Wasn't able to to uh, protect Aaron Rodgers for you know for majority of the night. Got hit way too many times. Um, but like I said, they was able to run the football better than they have in the past. So um, I believe if the offensive line could come together and put together a, a sound game in the running game and in the passing game, I just think it, I, I just think it really makes them that much more dangerous. They should be a playoff caliber team. I agree with you. Yeah. I feel like they should be a playoff caliber team before making a trade. But to your point, Devontae can't improve the offensive line play. Right. Because what we're seeing in this – first quarter of the NFL season, Aaron Rodgers is not as mobile as he used to be. He's not as right. elusive. You yeah, know what I mean? Buying time. He, yeah, you can tell he lost a step, maybe because of yeah. age or maybe because of the injury. Whatever the case is, he's not as, as elusive as he used to be, and that really takes a toll on the offensive line play because they've been like, he's been getting beat up. Secondly, yeah. defensive line-wise, right, we've been – we've always considered the Jets over the last few years, years even this year, to be very, very stout on the defensive side. But they became mm-hmm. vulnerable against running teams. Like Ray Davis yeah. last night, rookie from Kentucky, made his first start. I mean, he had over 150 yards total uh, offense from scrimmage and had almost 100 yards rushing on 20 attempts. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not dominant defensive football. And you look at what they did, what they allowed week one against San Francisco. So they had some holes on the defensive side, can Devontae help help that side? No, because he can't tackle. He ain't right. playing uh, D-line or anything like that. So there's still some holes, but they should improve. The one window of opportunity for the Jets is this. You look at the AFC. I have the AFC, the AFC standings up right now, Pat P. It's kind of wide open, right? Buffalo is the top of the AFC East. Miami right. without Tua Tonga Vailoa, you don't know when he is going to return. But one thing we know, when he's not in the lineup, they're not a good team. Yep. You transition to the AFC North, you got Baltimore and Pittsburgh. That's it. The AFC South, you pretty much got one team. That's mm-hmm. the Texans. And the AFC yep. West, you pretty much got two teams. Right now, now Denver has really been surprising. But right now, it's the, the, the Chargers and Kansas City. So just because of how wide open the entire AFC is, that's a window of opportunity for the Jets. They got an intriguing well, game this week, Sunday night, against Pittsburgh. Yeah, very interesting. Can they afford to go two and five and still make a run? I don't know. So I don't. You don't want to say it's a must win this early in the season when you already have two wins, but you don't want to keep losing and squandering away opportunities. And also, too, with this Devontae trade for for our viewers that are tuning in, he actually included in this year. He has two more years under his current deal, so that he's he added basically two more years. Yeah, so he's basically tied to the Jets until 2026. That would be his last year. Year now, I'm pretty. I'm I'm pretty much. I, I believe they're going to rework some things and you know give him some new money. But if you're Devontae, you don't know what do you do. You agree to this move, Pat P? Not knowing if Aaron Rodgers is going to be the quarterback in 2025. Mm. Think about it. Yeah. Because they're gonna be looking if if he's not on the roster next year, they're gonna be looking for another quarterback, for sure. Um, I mean, Aaron must have told him that he's gonna be playing at least another year after this season. He had to. I mean, and, that's and the only way I can see consent. And even if he did, anything can happen between now and the end of the season where he changed his mind. Because if you yeah. Devontae Adams, you basically agreed to become a New York Jet because of the short term convenience with Aaron Rodgers. Right. But the long right. term, if he's not there, you basically in the same position you just were a part of with the Raiders with no quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so, going to be a tricky situation to see how it all end up fit, uh, playing out for sure. Yeah. Well, we have to see how it play out. But right now, uh, they have a reason to feel good after losing because you got a big time contributor to the offense. And speaking of the loss, uh, Monday night, AFC game. The division title was on the line. First place in the division was on the line, Pat P. The -hmm. Buffalo Bills took care of the business against the Jets 23 to 20. You talked about how sloppy the play was on both sides of football. Josh Allen became Josh Allen and took care of his business, right? But one thing I want to talk to you about, and we discussed, you know, at the end of the last drive for the Jets, they had a shot 
and clearly was some miscommunication between Aaron Rodgers and this wide receiver Mike Williams. Mike right. was open. Aaron tried to get the football to him. It was underthrown. Big time inter- interception by Johnson, if I'm not mistaken. But post game, they asked Aaron Rodgers about that play, right? And this is what Aaron Rodgers said when asked about that play. Rodgers pulled no punches. He said Williams ran the wrong route. Where there's two verticals, Alan Lazard is down the seam. Mike's down the red line, Rodgers said. I looked up at Allen. He put his hands up. Three guys go to him, go with him. So I'm throwing a no look to the red line. So my, uh, Aaron Rodgers basically threw, I don't want to say throw, but he kind of put all the blame on Mike Williams and, and gave us great in-depth about who was supposed to do what and why it didn't work out. Now, me and you, we played the game. We've been in these scenario, these situations before. But what were your thoughts when you heard that presser from Aaron Rodgers, the statement in re, in terms of Mike Williams? Um, I was surprised um, because watching the watching the play, Mike was never on the red line from the get go. Mike was inside. Pat, hold on, go ahead. Hold on, Pat. For our viewers, explain to them the red line because you know oh, we okay. know what the red line is. Right. They might not know what the red line. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people when they were listening to Aaron talk, like, what are you talking about the red line? Like, because he never really explained what it is, but explain to our right. viewers the red line. Yeah, so what the red line is, it's on every college field, every practice NFL field, field NFL. practice, practice field for the most part. Yeah. Basically, what it's doing is teaching the receiver and the quarterbacks to have a gauge on how far he has to throw the ball outside of the receipt on the upfield shoulder of the receiver to make it hard for the, um, for the defender uh, to make a play on it. So for an example, if I'm a cornerback and I'm pressing the guy, if I know he's plus two from the numbers and he's give me a wide re- split, nine, a wide release, nine times out of 10, he's trying to get on that on the red line to be able to give the quarterback about what I think it's like four yards between the red line and the it's about um, four, four and a half from the yeah, side. Yeah, four, four, four and a half. So it's it's about four yards from the red line that we don't. It's imaginary red line when we're playing games, but on the foot on the practice field, practice it's field. an actual red line, and it's about four yards away from the sideline. So the receivers want to be on that line as much as possible, so the quarterback, like I said, can be able to put it on the upfield shoulder, high and away from the uh, from the receive. I mean from the uh, from the defender, but. Back to my original point, Mike Williams was never in a position to be on the red line. It looked like Mike was running a corner route from for mm-hmm. one, and it's hard for the receiver to get to the red. It's not necess- it's not necessarily hard for the receiver to get to the red line from the split that Mike had because if I'm not mistaken, he was like a plus one split from the numbers. He probably could, he could have been lined up on top of the numbers, but anyway, it's hard. It's difficult for a receiver to get from the split that Mike was to the red line. That's just, that's, you, I mean, you playing T-ball now with the, with the defensive back if you, if you line up and do that. Mm-hmm. So that, that was probably number one where he was lined up wrong. But then again, if Aaron saw him, then he would have told him to bump him out if he was running the, you know, the fade or whatever. So um, I was shocked how in depth Aaron got with that, uh, with that, que- uh, with that question. Um, and yeah, I said he did throw him up under the bus because he just flat out said it. He ran the wrong route. You know what I mean? And it did not look like Aaron was throwing the ball to the red to line. To the red line. I mean, the ball was on the throw for one. Mm-hmm. But he said he saw Mike out of his corner eye or a receiver out of his corner eye. So as he was throwing it, he was trying to save it. And that's how the ball ended up getting on the throw. I mean, he's Aaron Rodgers, so. 90% of the world is going to believe it, but I didn't buy that one bit. Mm. Yeah, that was a little, you know, to your point with him being how in-depth he was. It could, You could have easily, you know, there's a communication error. You ain't got to say who had the communication error. There's a communication error, uh, you know, with the route concept. We got to be better. But he went into specifics, and now we all look at Mike Williams for screwing it up even though he was wide open, that led to that interception, right? And I can tell you this much, Pat, hearing that, Mike Williams getting traded. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, I mean, that's why yeah, they went he, and got Devontae Adams right as soon as the, the game was over. 
Yeah, he yeah, he 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 he's out of there. He he yeah. gone. He he going to somebody. I don't know who, but he Sweet. he's getting traded. Yeah. But 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 and, and also too, Pat, you don't usually hear quarterbacks with that type of dialogue to the mm-hmm. media about a play that went wrong with the specific you don't usually hear that. So right. I don't know if Aaron was more frustration than anything, but Wow, that 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 took me by surprise as well. Just like it yeah. was for you and me before our viewers, because you don't hear, usually hear quarterbacks give that in-depth explanation about what went wrong and who was wrong. You know yeah. what I mean? Usually we have to think and assume. Right. Uh, he made it known, Mike. You ran the wrong route. That's yeah, why I played him. That's what you picked. For like, because like for the most part, you know, most quarterbacks would be like, you know, you know, we had a miscommunication on that play. You know, we gotta we gotta be better on communication. Nah, A Rod said he was supposed to be doing this. I was was expecting him to be here. The ball never got there for one, but I was expecting yeah. him to be there. <laughs> I was expecting him to be on the red line. This, that, and the other. He ran the wrong route. So Mike's at fault. Yeah. That's what it that's what it boiled down to. Well well, let's see who who makes a move for Mike Williams, because he he they haven't said it yet. To my knowledge, but yeah, he's probably on the trading block. Yeah. Uh, and other news in the NFL: another trade happened with a wide receiver. Uh, go figure, right? The Buffalo Bills they traded for Amari Cooper. They ended up also receiving a 2025 sixth round pick from the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Cleveland gets a 2025 third round pick and a 2026 sixth round pick. Uh, the remain remainder of his salary is less than a million dollars. So for Buffalo. Wow. This is a low risk, high reward type move financially because he's getting less than a mil the rest of the way. And I think the Browns are eating. They, they kind of reworked his deal. So when you look at this move, Pat, how do you feel about Amari Cooper joining Josh Allen, and the Buffalo Bills? Hey, Mac, is this true that Amari, Amari Cooper is leading the league in drops? I heard that stat today or like top in the league in the league of leading um Drop wow. I mean, that's the case. That's surprising because you know he's been one of the more shorthanded. I know. I know. I, I know they said something about it last night. Lazar. Mm-hmm. He, I know he was leading the league, or he was top, whatever. And drops. In yeah, and drops. But anywho, yeah. Um, I like this trade. Um, the Buffalo Bills were in a d- desperate need of a, a, a of a real number one receiver. They went out. They went out and got one. Um, and Amari Cooper. I, I I believe that he's still a receiver that can you know produce outside the numbers, inside the numbers, wherever you, you know, want to have them lined up at. Um, and I think it also gives them the bills, the ability for him, uh, Keon Coleman to learn under a veteran, you know? So I thought this move was uh much needed for the Buffalo bills. They got better a hundred percent in the defense, uh, in the receiver room. Um, now it's going to be down to Josh Allen because now he has another credible weapon besides his tight ends. Um, mm. That can catch the ball for him, for him now. So, um, I I would say the Buffalo Bills want this trade on the simple fact that they really needed a receiver. Yep, they got him on a low bargain, and he's going to come in right away and be able to show these younger guys who they drafted and who they traded for Samuel last year from um Samuel's come from Washington, right? Yeah, Curtis Samuel. Yeah, Washington. Curtis Samuel's from Washington. Give them those guys opportunity to, to learn under you know a, a, a former All Pro, former Pro Bowlers, watching, watching, learn how he's coming to work each and every day, how he's able to continue to produce, you know, at the age that he's at. So I go with the Bills winning the trade uh, between the two receivers because, like I said, they was in more need mm-hmm. of a receiver. Do you think the Browns should be more <laughs> sellers before the trade deadline? Just trading away your number one wide receiver. Yeah, I know you brought in Jerry Judy, gave him a new contract. But it seems like, like, what are y'all doing? You're already losing. You, what, you're yeah. one in five, right? One in five. And you just traded away one of the best offensive playmakers you have on your team. You get Chubb back eventually. But it's all like, like what are you doing? Do you think the, yeah. the Browns are sellers at this point? That's what it looked like. Yes, <laughs> for the most part, because I, 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 hell, I even if they are sellers, I was seeing some some teams was calling them for uh, calling them for Miles Garrett. <laughs> no question. Let's see what that, if, if y'all want to do that, and you know who can use Miles Garrett? Not necessarily Detroit. saying they need him. They could use him, and they have the finances to take on his salary. Not Detroit, Ooh. Chicago. Ooh, they got a lot of cap space. Ooh. 
Chicago got a lot of cap space. To your point, Aiden Hutchinson being out for the year. Yes, Detroit. I don't know where they are when it comes to cap space because they spent a lot of money this offseason. Paid Jerry Gall, yeah. paid left tackle Panay Suel, uh, played uh, Amon Ra St. Brown. They've yeah. paid a lot of players. So I don't know where they are when it comes to cap space. But Detroit, but Chicago, Chicago got money to burn. And that defense already is legit. If you put Miles Garrett with Montez Sweat, mm. and if I'm mm. Chicago with your quarterback being on a rookie deal, this is where you really put the chips in the middle of the table yeah. and say, man, let's go. I'm all in. Yeah. And get this yeah. to your point. You probably you, – you, Brad Holmes, who is the GM for the Detroit Lions, is probably trying to just – see what the word is about Miles Garrett. So you probably know he's trying to see what's up. If you're right. Chicago, not only do you get better, but you eliminate a big-time productive player from going to your Division Four in Detroit. Yeah. That would make – if they add a guy like Miles Garrett, that would make them a legit com- contender. Right away. Yeah, I agree. I like that. I'll give a – because think about that. Chicago, they have a first, but they have two seconds. So they're getting Carolina's second round pick for this upcoming draft, yep. which is probably going to be like a first rounder because Carolina probably going to have the first pick in the second round like they might have the first pick in the first round. Right. So they got draft picks to flirt with the Browns. Like, we got draft picks. Like, and, and they first rounder might be in the back end if they have a successful season this season. Right? So mm-hmm. it's almost like this, Pat. If we trade for Miles Garrett, if they want a first rounder for Miles Garrett, our first rounder might be in the late twenties, right? And we got two second round picks. Yeah. If I'm Ryan Poles, if I'm Ryan Poles, I go get it done because they tried to go get Matthew Judon from the Patriots, but he ended up going to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So they're in the they're in the business of adding another pass rusher. Pass rusher, and Matt Eberflus even said during the summertime, having one great pass rusher is one thing, but when you got two. Man. Pat, you know how it is when you got two of them boys out there, huh? Special, man. You just sit back and relax. <laughs> so, hey, here on All Things Covered, I don't know if Ryan Poe's a fan of the show or not, but if he is, man, get on the phone call and see what it'll take to go get Miles Garrett and add him to your team. Because if you do that, that division already spicy. Boy. Yeah. Them, them quarterbacks better look out, man, because this can mm-hmm. get really, really ugly. Last question before we transition to recapping uh, some of the NFL games. Games. Who do you think got the better deal? Both teams traded for wide receiver in Buffalo and the Jets. But who actually got the got the best deal between Buffalo getting Amari Cooper or the Jets getting Devontae Adams? Um, like I said, the Bills. The Bills because... They was in desperate need of, of a receiver. Their quarterback situation is more stable as yep. far as the length that he have remaining on his contract. Aaron Rodgers is, what, 41 now? So it's a possibility that he may not play next year. So that's up in the air. Um, and I just feel like, like I said, he can he's going to come in right away and be the guy. Like, I feel like Garrett is the guy in New York. Aaron has a good relationship, so he's going to try to feed him in as much as he can. He's going to get his his touches. But in my opinion, he Garrett Wilson is the number one receiver over there. You know what I mean? He just made them better. Like the Jets I'm speaking of. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, the Bills needed, needed a receiver. <laughs> and no a desperate need of a receiver. So um, I go with, like I said, I go with the um, – with the uh, with the bills and the contract, they, they're paying them what a million bucks, less than a million. They, now they nope. may ha- they're gonna have to give them some new money, an extension. But right now, for the short term, right, it's it's financially doable for sure. Yep, one hundred percent. So yeah. the bills. We have some exciting news for all of our listeners, all of our viewers, all of our fans. We have an exclusive discount code with Home Field Apparel, one of the best apparel companies in the world. At checkout, if you enter in your promo code COVERED, C-O-V-E-R-E-D, in in the checkout promo code, you will get 15% off, which is a very, very exclusive discount coming from yours truly, all things covered. Now it's time to recap 
the great NFL weekend that we just watched. A lot of things happened. Our former team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, we talked about how important this game was a week ago. Traveling to Las Vegas, playing against the Raiders, who are spiraling in the wrong direction. The Steelers in the midst of a two-game losing streak, needing to win and needing to win with style. Guess what? They answered the call. 32-13 victory for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Justin Fields, when you look at his numbers, he only threw for 145 yards. He ran for another 59. Uh, had over 200 yards of total offense, but he had two rushing touchdowns as well. The thing that we're loving about Justin Fields, what he don't give you throwing, he can give you running, which helps, right? Which helps. Right. And with that win, we heard some surprising news coming from Pittsburgh. The Pittsburgh Steelers are considering hearing that, knowing that Russell is finally cleared to participate in full goal activities. They are considering starting Russell Wilson this week, Sunday night against the Jets. What are your thoughts in hearing they're considering starting Russell Wilson? Uh, I was kind of up in the air when I saw this. I, I'm like, for when I first saw, I'm like, is it Coach T just trying to put bait out there so they can be prepared for both quarterbacks? Um, is he really? considering taking Justin Fields out. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think, honestly, I, I believe it's, it's, a, it's a mind play, in my, mm. in my opinion, just because I, I, I just think it's hard to take out a quarterback who's playing, who's playing exceptional well with what he got out there with the weapons that he have. You know, well, you know what? Let me ask you this question then, Pat P. Talk you were just me. in that locker room a year ago. Mm. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, you're still in the locker room right now as a player. And your Tuesday afternoon went in, you got some work done, studied some tape, and now you're hearing they're considering starting Russell. If you were part of that team, how would you feel? The honest truth? Yes, the honest truth. Yes, this. I'd be like, all right, let's roll. Because at the end of the day, Mac, that 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 decision is something that's out of my hands. You know what I mean? So... It's only well, so who much would you that want to be the starting quarterback then. Because I would want Justin Fields to play himself out of it. Okay. All right. Yeah, I would I would I would like to see Justin Fields play himself out of the starting from being a starting quarterback. Okay. And that's just me. Mm -hmm. Now, but you know in Pittsburgh we have this thing where you don't lose your job to injury. Like that's the unwritten kind of rule whatever you don't lose your job to injury i wonder is that a a a, a play to kind of hey you really get a fair shot because you were injured uncontrollable we're winning ball games but there's some things we can do better offensively yeah. but to your point there's something up about this because i don't think i don't think he's gonna start russell me either i don't think he's gonna start russell no nope. I, I really i think what we I just think you give him something else to uh, to practice on. <laughs> yeah, well, because Mike Tomlin is he's a strategic individual. He don't do something and not have a plan in place. Everything right. that he says, his actions, how he addressed the media, it's not just freelancing. He has a plan in place, right? And hearing this, it's like we just had our this was our first time scoring thirty plus the entire season, right? We hadn't scored thirty points as an offense, Pittsburgh, going Since back to week seventeen. Of, of last year. Well, that Week was 17 was the last time you scored 30 point, points. Yep. So mm -hmm. this was the best offensive performance. Running game was clicking. Russell didn't, I mean, Justin didn't th throw any turnovers. You scored 32 points. And now all of a sudden you want to pull him after he kind of really starting to get comfortable? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, bro. It's, it's, we're going to wait and see. And I can tell you this much. Knowing Mike T, he's going to wait to the 25th hour. <laughs> 100%. He's going to wait till the 25th hour before he make it known who will try it out with the ones uh, Sunday. But one thing to monitor is with practice, legit practicing, getting practices about to start, you know, is it going to be split repet repetition? Like yeah. if you got Justin going with the ones this group, Russell going with the ones this group, if that's the case, I don't like that either because, you know, you're trying to get acclimated. You just, yeah. Who the guy is, let the guy be the guy. Yeah, I just I just feel like it, it 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 messes up the flow, but I don't know who am I. Yep, but to your point, 
it's hard for me to believe he's going to pull Justin. We got to wait and see. In other news, one of the bigger games from this past Sunday, Detroit, the Lions traveled down to D-Town, Dallas, Texas. Mm. Took care of business easily, 47-9. to Dallas, another embarrassing loss at home. If you're going back to the playoffs, they've now been embarrassed the last four straight home games. Now, they did fight from behind against Baltimore, but for three quarters, they were down in the, in, in the slump for, for, for three quarters that Baltimore Raven game. They allowed 184 yards on the ground to Detroit. Man, what, 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 I, a lot of people are trying to figure out what's going on with the, the, the Cowboys. What's wrong? Yeah. The problem is they were built wrong. Yeah. That's, how, that's the problem I see. And what I mean when I say that, the Cowboys were kind of built to play seven on seven. Yep. Finesse football. Throw it, get a lead, rush the passer. That's it. They were built wrong. So how can you fix that during the season? You can't. You can't. Because your personnel is the personnel, Pat P. It's not like you can do an mm-hmm. overhaul of an entire personnel and say, hey, let's bring them out and bring in new guys and we, let's get it right. No, your personnel is your personnel. Your D-tackles are too small. And if you if you have undersized D-tackles, they got to be super strong to hold the point of attack. Like, they got to be strong anchors. They ain't strong. They undersized. You got linebackers that do better chasing down guys instead of coming down the teeth of an offense, taking on blocks, taking on, you know, uh, blockers and linemen. So if you, if they're not running east-west, they can't handle that north and south type running game. And that's what we saw from Detroit. Detroit was running that zone, outside zone, inside zone, coming down the teeth, David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. So you can't you can't correct it. Only thing you can hope for is just bad play from the offense that allows you to kind of jumpstart your momentum. Because if you don't jumpstart your momentum, they're not a team that can play from behind defensively. They need to be what I call front runners. Get a lead, and now the Mm -hmm. offense is more one-dimensional where we know what they're doing, and we can go ahead and attack. Because what they did against Pittsburgh was fool's goal. Pittsburgh didn't have their best explosive runners which kind of made them one dimensional as a running team. And the Cowboys, they just, they, every dog gets a bone. But moving forward, yeah, they built wrong, Pat P. And, and I'll tell you this much, Pat P, you know this about the game. Your defensive line is a sound reflection of your offensive line. Because if you got a physical offensive line that can run the football, nine times out of ten, you probably got a physical defensive line that can stop the running game from, at least from time to time. Because who they yep. practice against? Each yep. other. Yeah. So if you got a stout offensive line, nine times out of ten, your defensive line is, is pretty stout as well. But what we're seeing, the Cowboys can't stop the run, and they can't run. Yeah, I, I, I agree with everything that you said. They're, they can't stop the run. Um, they can't run the football. Um, for the last couple of weeks, they can't put the ball in the end zone. No. It just seemed like uh, – it just it it doesn't seem like the offense that we saw last year when it was able when they were scoring forty plus points at the house when they got forty put put up on them last week, but it just seemed like they're missing something and I don't know what it is, um, but they 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 definitely need to need to figure it out because the way the season looking man it's gonna it's gonna look like they're gonna fall into that prediction that everybody where everybody had them and that's at the bottom of the NFC East. And man, yeah, and, and the only thing they can do is the teams they're playing against turnovers. Because you remember a year ago, their mm-hmm. defense was very, very opportunistic. They were in a stout group, but they jump started their efforts because they created turnovers and creating yep. sacks. Yep. You know, creating turnovers, either scoring with defensively on defensively or the offense was scoring first. And before you know it, they up 10 points. And now they're just peeling their ears back, rushing mm-hmm. the passer. But now yep. when you look at what teams are doing, Man, we really ain't going to try to throw it around the yard. We're going to run it. We're going to run it and see can you slow down the running game. The Cowboys is like the the, the USC Trojans in the Big Ten. They ain't big enough to stop the run. No, they damn sure ain't. They they very like. With USC, every Big Ten team is trying to run down the teeth because we feel like you ain't strong enough to stop it. So for the Mm -hmm. Cowboys, every team they play against is going to try to do the same thing. Right. Run down the teeth there. One time, run down the teeth of their, their defense. So they like what can be done? Nothing. You, they built wrong. You do built wrong, and that's another thing. If you would have, if they would have, this is the last thing I say about the Cowboys. We'll move on. 
if they would have brought in Derrick Henry, he instantly toughens up your team. Yeah. He instantly, on either side, he toughens up your team because his style of play, it will trickulate throughout the entire locker room. Right. Right? So you didn't bring Derrick Henry in. You didn't bring any significant running backs that can kind of set the tone for you. It's like every other team got better in their division. That's why I didn't pick the Cowboys. My prediction in the summertime, I didn't pick them to make the playoffs. Everybody laughed at me like, what are you talking about? Right. I said every other team in their division got better. Mm -hmm. I say the Cowboys didn't even stay the same. They got worse because they lost significant pieces. And your D.C. Right. Who's your head coach in your division? Who is currently 4-2? and two? Right. So how do you expect to have same like success when you actually got worse and every other team in your neighborhood, every other team in your neighborhood got bigger houses and your house got smaller. Yeah. You know, so we have to wait and see. And speaking of the commanders, it was a good game. They ended up losing, but 30 to 23. I really, I really learned a lot about the commanders. They're a feisty group. And that quarterback, Jaden Daniels, LSU alum, had a heck of a day, 269 yards, two touchdowns. But Lamar Jackson, Pat P, from your hometown, Pompano Beach, Florida, Lamar Jackson is that dude, man. He, been that light, dude. he had a light 323 yards. He it was under the radar in the touchdown. Derrick Henry, once again, over 100 yards. Is Lamar Jackson the best player in, college, in the NFL right now? Yes. Yeah, I Simple as that. Yes. Because he's doing it at a pat on the passing side now. You know, you know, that's always been a big question mark. Can he pass? Yep. He, you know, coming in the league, should be a tight end, this, that, and other. He can pass for 300, and he can run for 100 yards when he wants, honestly. If he really wanted to rush for 100 yards per game, he could easily do that. You know, so – and now having a Derrick Henry with him to kind of lighten up the load and open up the passing lane behind the linebackers – it just made him that much better because he have improved as a passer. You can tell that he has full control of the offense now. And the team is, is round with Lamar Jackson. Like it's, it's literally all on him. And you can tell the way that they're playing um, on Sundays that they're all in and they're behind number eight, their quarterback. Man, Lamar Jackson is so special. And I, I think back to two summers ago, when he requested a trade and there were so many teams that came out and said, no, we're not considering trading for Lamar Jackson. Right. What were they thinking? I, Oh no, we, yeah. we're not considering trading for Lamar Jackson. Are you drunk? Yeah, they must've had some of that Hennessy I took that one time. That white had to be. That chest was bunning. Cause you got to be. <laughs> Lamar Jackson is man. Lamar Jackson is that dude, bro. Yeah, he and, it, is. and it it pains me to say that because he in the AFC North with the Steelers, but that man is special. But I'll say he this, really Pat, is, he, he won't be judged until the postseason. Yeah, we all know that. Yeah, he yeah he got to go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, you got to go. <laughs> you got to go. To the Super Bowl. He got to go. He got to go. Because think about this, Pat P. Lamar Jackson already has just as many MVPs as he has postseason wins. If you wow. want another MVP, yeah, he has just as many MVPs as postseason wins. If he wins another MVP, that would be three. Three in his short career. Like he's been in the league, what, six, seven years? Yeah. Three MVPs. And you have three MVPs in an era where Pat Mahomes have lived. Right. <laughs> Think about that. You right. say Pat Mahomes is the greatest of the greats right now. Yeah, he like, is. That's where he's going. Mm -hmm. But you got if you got three MVPs in his era. Like playing with Jordan, you got three MVPs. You got to get home. Yep. And home is New Orleans. No doubt about it. Pat P. Before we transition to our picks, let's give your your your, your LSU Tigers some love, man. We talked about this matchup. Hosting a top ten team in Ole Miss, the Rebels came in. I think they were ninth in the in the nation. Coming yeah. to Baton Rouge, SEC play one of the more entertaining games this past mm -hmm. weekend. College football, twenty nine twenty six overtime win. Before we talk about the game, Pat P, 
I sent you a clip, something that I saw. I was so surprised to see. I don't know if it was halftime. I don't know if it was a timeout. But they were playing Lil Boosie, set it off in the stadium. And the stadium was pitch black. It was nothing but lighters. And they had, like, the neo lights going, the ambient lights and everything like that. Like, it was a Mercedes Benz. And the whole stadium was singing set it off. Is that, like, a thing? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. that's the thing. Talking outside – Talking outside of the uh, outside of your neck is a thing. Um, the Baton Rouge song, I cannot remember the name of that. That's the thing. It's like, yeah, we got a we got a whole bunch of traditions around there that that's just like nonstop, man. Like it's 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 meant for people to to experience Death Valley, especially at night. Though day t- day games are a little different, but a night game, uh huh, it's nothing like it, bro. Man, listen, man. You, we were talking back and forth during that game, man. Like that—that that was Gus Nussmeyer had a had a day. Uh, your defense yeah. came up big when they needed to. Uh, Kyron Lacy, he he's looking like he's going to be the next great wide receiver yeah, uh, for is. LSU to go ahead and get drafted high and have a heck of a career as well. So I'm so I'm I know you are already biased. I already know how you feel about LSU. But the oh, next yeah. three ball games are super important. You yeah. got Arkansas this week. Which is important because remember I I shared with you and our viewers, now with the realignment and conference play, there's no divisions anymore. The top two teams get an opportunity to play for a championship, conference championship. Mm -hmm. Right. And the winner will have a week, a a first round bye, and the loser will get an automatic bid into the playoffs. So now next week you got Arkansas, who had a huge win a few weeks ago against Tennessee. And after that, you got A and M who playing real good football. You travel to A and M and then you got Bama. Like, the next three weeks is going to be a defining moment for LSU. How you feel about these stretch, this this three-game stretch starting with Arkansas for your Tigers? I feel really good because I, I feel like the team is forming at the right time. Um, I would love for us to start the games a little bit faster. Mm. But for the most part, we're moving the ball up and down the field. Um, we like for our defense, defensive back. You know, stop giving up so many explosive plays in yep. the first half, you know, instead of going back into the, you know, in the locker room, trying to fix the problems versus already being ahead of it. Because we know that's something that's been our Achilles heel so far, those big plays in the back end. Um, but for the most part, man, I feel real comfortable, real, real comfortable about the Tigers and what I've been seeing um, over the last you know couple of weeks. But the beginning of the season was a little scarce, a lot of question marks, but I think the team is forming like they're in gelling at the right time. Uh, the quarterback and the receiver connection looking real good. Um, Brian Kelly, who is 13 and 0, 13 and 0 in Death Valley at, uh, when the game is at night, mm. that's a huge stat. So he loves, he liked being up under, under the lights as well. Um, but yeah, I, I really feel like this was a huge momentum booster, uh, for, for us as a, as a, um, as a team. Um, a and is always uh, Arkansas is always going to be a tough game. A and M is going to be a tough game, and we already know uh, the biggest one out of those three is the Alabama one. So, especially um, if y'all if y'all beat Arkansas, the A and M going in that Bama week. Yeah, it's a lot of stake. It's going to be a lot of stake. So I'm excited. I'm excited where the boys are right now, man. I can't wait to see how they perform Saturday against Arkansas to continue to uh, have those building blocks. Until you know, until where we want to be at the end of at the end of the season. Yeah, well, we're gonna see. We're gonna pay attention. Well, you know, right now my Florida State Seminoles ain't doing too good, so no. I'm a residential tiger right now. <laughs> let's I'm a go, residential tiger, man. Go let's Tigers! Go. Oh, let's right. go, baby. We're we'll welcome you. All right, Pat P. We got picks once again. Once mm-hmm. again, we got picks. Now, every week we do this, and we analyze and we keep record of our picks. Yeah. Yours truly, number one, Pat P. Thank you, thank you so much, my guy. I, man, listen, man, you know I love you, bro. You my guy. I got my, I got my good water, my Voss. <laughs> you know your water gonna be there now. My Don't good Voss is there. Marco. See, one thing I love, I love doing good business with Pat P. Because you know, you don't, you know, you hate doing business with people. Where you got to remind them, hey, <laughs> hey, man, you know, you know such and such, right? You know, you know. my guy. I got to remind him nothing. He goes, he gonna do what he's supposed to do. That's why he all right. That's why he always going to win. Yeah, man, that's, right? that's, Do hey, good that's business. Not, that's how your boy good is, business. man. Yes, sir. <laughs> good business. Man, what they, what they say, business. fast but pay, make fast We gave some friends. picks last week. 
Dom DeMarco. No question. So we did picks last week. I came out on top. Uh, the record was I was three and two, right? We had a few ties, but overall I came out on top. Now yeah. what we will do also, right? My guy Pat P, because he's not active right now, he's been dibbling dabbling in the old parlay game. Yes, so tell the folks, man. We're gonna tell show you guys. We're gonna show you guys. No, we ain't gonna tell them. We're gonna show oh. them. Oh, we're going to show them. What you just put together this past weekend. And this is what we do here on All Things Kabat, right? <laughs> we talk about it, but then we also, through the weekend, we go ahead and mix and mangle. We be having our conference calls. Who you yep. like? Who you like? <laughs> who you like? Who you like? So these are the winning tickets from this past weekend. some picks for you guys hope you hope you got your notepad pat p trying to get back on top right now i'm above 500 so i feel real real good if you're above yep. 500 you never get in the red mm -hmm. that's the key 100%. not to get in the red all right pat p you know we always love to to incorporate the thursday night game this week we got a little it's not mm. a rivalry but we got a little homecoming to say the least okay right? go ahead keep talking i need yeah. to get my pen I need we, to get my we pen. got <laughs> new orleans hosting the denver broncos Okay. There's a lot of intrigue associated with this ball game, but I'd be remiss if I don't mention this is the first time Sean Payton is returning to New Orleans as the head coach of the opposing team, the Denver Broncos, right? Okay. And with that being said, the Denver Broncos are laying, they're giving two and a half to the New Orleans Saints. Wow. I already know where I'm going. Denver traveling to New Orleans, giving up two and a half. Where are you going, Pat P? I'm taking the Broncos laying two and a half. I think the Broncos are a three point, uh, three point winner. I can see yeah. the Broncos winning by three points. No Derek Carr, potentially yeah. no Chris Olave. He he got concussed this past Sunday. Rashid Shahid is dealing with a knee ailment. Already got some offensive line issues. We don't know if Pat Sertan Jr. is going to be playing because he got concussed last concussed, week as well. Yeah, he got concussion as well. Uh, Moss, the other cornerback for for Denver's dealing with some injuries, but I I, I like I like what I'm seeing from Bo Nix. So this is Bo Nix versus Spencer Rattler. Yeah, two quarterbacks. I'm taking the Broncos. Yeah, I'm taking the Broncos too. New Orleans are leaking leaking a little bit too much for me. Yep. Um, to say that they're gonna you know put up a competitive game. I mean, they played competitive last week. Just that game got away from from them in the fourth quarter. Um, Tampa just you know the offense was just a little bit too potent uh, for 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 uh, for the New Orleans Saints, and I like what Sean Payton and Bo Nix is, are doing right now, man. Uh, I I really do. So, and I think this is going to be a, a a great homecoming for Sean Payton. I know this is a game that means a lot to him. So, I'm riding with the Denver Broncos as well, laying the two and a half. All right, next game we got for you: Detroit traveling to Minnesota. Minnesota coming off a of bye. Mm -hmm. This is a huge game with division implications on the line. Yep. Minnesota, they're giving two and a half right now to the Detroit Lions. I know where I'm going. Where are you going? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the Detroit Lions. Oh, this is with the, the first, points. This is the first difference of picks. With, with the points, I'm, I'm taking the Detroit Lions because I know it's going to be a close game. And if Minnesota do win, I think it's going to be a, a close game. If Minnesota win, they're going to win by three. Um, I just think they haven't met a physical team that's that's going to like really, really up like commit to running the football. And I just think they're going to do enough. I know the defense is playing on fire right now, as far as confusing quarterbacks, this, that, and the other. But I just think something about Detroit, man. I like I like the I like the uh, what they what they're doing on, on the offensive side of the ball. They're gonna run the football. They got a little flair in their passing game. They got weapons all around uh, on every level um, on the offensive side of the ball. I'm worried about their defense, but I think their offense can um, withstand uh, the points that the defense may give up. Another difference of opinions here. I'm taking Minnesota laying two and a half. Number one, 
I trust Kevin O'Connor more so than Dan Campbell. Yeah, okay. I said it. I I think the coaching advantage is to Kevin O'Connell. That's number one. Number two, home field advantage. Skull Nation. Yeah. That's huge as well. And the last thing I will mention into why I like Minnesota to cover this two and a half. You talked about the offense for Detroit. Yes, physical, run the football. But mm-hmm. one thing with Jared Goff, the kryptonite to Jared Goff has been pressure. When pressure is coming, he gets antsy. He yeah. throws the football. He does not handle pressure well. He is going to see pressure every opportunity. b flow can bring pressure. He is going to bring pressure. That mm-hmm. is going to hurt. That is going to really cause issues for Jared Goff. If you don't believe me, look at the numbers when he's been blitzed. He does oh, not yeah. do well. And name another team that bring pressure, not just regular pressure, exotic pressure where you really got to figure out who's where coming, they coming from and who's yeah. yep. Especially on the road where you got to utilize a silent count, that is going to be an issue. Now, I do have my concerns with Aaron Jones. Remember the last time we saw Aaron Jones, he didn't finish the game. He was hobbled with a lower leg injury or something like that. We haven't heard too much. But I'm taking Minnesota, Skull Nation, at home, laying two and a half. All right, next game, Houston traveling to Green Bay. Man, we got some good games. We got some good games. Houston traveling to Green Bay. Green Bay is laying, giving two and a half to the Texans. Who you like? Uh, Let's go back. You said Detroit is getting two and a half. half. Yeah, Detroit getting two and a half. So I had that wrong. All right, Detroit getting two and a half, and Green Bay is giving two and a half. Green Bay is giving two and a half. So Houston getting. Houston, they're receiving two and a half. I'm going. I'm going. um, CJ Stroud. Oh, I like you. you. Yeah, this is going. This is going to really separate the overall record right here. I'm taking Green Bay. Okay. I'm taking Green Bay. Now, I must admit, Houston with uh, Joe Mixon, they look real good. They can run that football. But that Jordan Love? Well, that Jordan Love? Yeah, Jordan Love, bad boy, though. I like Jordan Love, but CJ Stroud is, too. Yeah, that Jordan Love. You know what, Pat? I'll be okay in seeing 45 to 40 type ball game because I I think they want to put they want to put up points like that. I'm okay with that. So you hey, got what's the, what's the what's the over under on that game? Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna tell you right now. That's a that's a great question. Forty seven and a half. Yeah, do it. That's the over under. I'm going Ooh. over on that. Ooh. Okay. Going, Next I'm game. This is another prime time game. Kansas City traveling to San Francisco. San Francisco is giving one and a half to Kansas City. Ooh, I like my homeboy. Anytime Pat Mahomes get in points, I don't care if it's a half yeah. point. I'm taking them. You, I like Mahomes more. <laughs> I'm taking them too. We both agree with that one. All right. The next game. And after this, we got one more. Now, this is an intriguing one. The New York Jets traveling to Pittsburgh Sunday night football. And the Pittsburgh Steelers will be uh will be um celebrating Favorite. the fiftieth anniversary of the Super Bowl team. Wearing the throwbacks, the block jerseys with the gray face masks. I've never seen that before in our era. So they're celebrating the 50th annual Super Bowl victory. And they're hosting the Jets. The Jets are giving the Pittsburgh Steelers one and a half. Pittsburgh. You know I got to take the Steelers. Yeah, I'm taking the Steelers. But I'm trying to figure that line. And also, too, Pat P, think about this. We might see Devontae Adams. Yeah, it's a, it's a chance. His hamstring not hurt no more. Oh, yeah, all of a sudden he healed. Yeah, he, he healthy now. And the, the over <laughs> under for that game, Pat P, is set at 38 in the hook. 38 in the hook. I love. Mm. So. I'm going I'm to go with the over. Yeah. I'm taking Pittsburgh as well. Okay. All right, last game for you. The Chargers traveling to our former team, the Arizona Cardinals. The Chargers quietly have been a real good team. Laying, they're giving two in the hook to the Arizona Cardinals. I like the Chargers. I like the Chargers as well. We don't even know if Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be able to go. Remember, he just exited the game. Yeah, the Green Bay cuss. Yeah. And it's something about the Arizona Cardinals. We're starting to see a disconnect on either side of the football right now. They're not really playing together football. And, and, it's, and I thought this team would be better than what we've seen. Like yeah. they got manhandled easily against Green Bay. 
Uh, so things have been two weeks. clicking. Yeah, yeah. But I'm taking the Chargers as well. The Chargers can run the football. That defense has been the unheralded, unheralded bright spot for what they do as a team. And I like Justin Herbert. So, so those yeah. are our picks right there. Man, we got a lot of you taking one way, I'm taking another way. Only the strongest will survive. Yes, All sir. Right. Let's see. I like your T-shirt. I like the brim you're rocking, man. Shots out to Home Field Apparel once again. Listen, when it comes to the latest collegiate gear, repping almost every university that is out there, Home Field Apparel is the place to go. Make sure you hit cover to get 15% off. The promo code, as I repeat, is cover to get 15% off. Our gifts to you guys for rocking with us. Now, our favorite segment when you talk about giving our flowers, giving flowers to defenders that are standing up big time in clutch moments, the Strap of the Week Award. This segment is brought to you by Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Yeah, Pat P. We're back again for our annual weekly Strap Award. For our viewers that don't know exactly what this is, you guys been watching football all year long, going back to mm -hmm. last year, the year before that. You see defenders all the time when they make a play. It's no more doing this, the incomplete sig uh, sign. You don't see this anymore. What you see, <clears throat> you see the straps. So with that being said, we have our strap. This is our award. Our strap of the week award goes to no other than the great drum roll, please. <laughs> Brian Branch. Yeah, Brian yeah, Branch is a heck of a football player, first and foremost. This man Big plays football point. the right way. He tackles. He's fast. He's instinctive. He's an all-around playmaker. He is like the Tyron Matthew for the Detroit Lions. Very, very versatile. When, you, when Tyron was in his prime, covering, blitzing, tackling, creating turnovers, that's who Brian Branch reminds me of right now, and he's been doing a heck of a job for the Detroit Lions. So with that being said, Pat P, viewers, let's set the scene. Here you have it right here on your screen. What you see right now, trips alignment is 11 personnel. The Cowboys, they came out in 11 personnel, one back, one tight end to the strong side, to the field side. You see trips, three wide receivers in a bunch set. Backside tight end is to the backside of the formation, offset back, shotgun. And right now, this is a pivotal mo moment in this ball game. Our producer, Hugo, he's a Dallas Cowboys fan. And if he loves the Cowboys like I think he loved the Cowboys, he remember how defining Pat P. This moment was. The reason why it was defining, there's over four minutes left to go on the clock in the first quarter. First quarter. Mm -hmm. The Dallas Cowboys are only down four. It's 7-3. They're in scoring range. It's third and five. Worst case scenario, you settle for a field goal. Mm -hmm. Best case scenario, you either get the first down or you score a touchdown. If yep. that happens, the game might play out totally different. Yep. Yep. Think about that, Cowboy fans. Well, unfortunately, because of Brian Bench, we got to highlight what he did. We got to relive the, the strap moment for you guys where everything went downhill. Here it is. I set the scene. I just gave you the formation. So what you have from the Detroit Lions is to the trip side, they're playing man to man. That's usually a common go to coverage, Pat P, in red zone, anywhere between that third and five, third and three, third and six, intermediate range. Most defenses are going to play quarters or man to man. Right. And mm -hmm. the Cowboys anticipated seeing man to man from Aaron Glenn, the DC of the Detroit Lions. So you would think. You got the call you were looking to get. You're going to execute it. But unfortunately, it did not go as planned. And the thing I love about Brian Branch, as you see there on your screen to the trip side, Pat P, you know how it is. If we play man to man and it's trips that we cover, we all can't be on the same level. Because nope. if we're on the same level, we're going to get bundled up in a traffic jam. Somebody's going to get picked. But you look at the smartness of Brian Branch. He is playing with depth, so he's going to allow the, the bunch formation to unfold. Work itself out. He can't get caught up in a traffic jam. He has to sit back and play with depth. Let it unfold. And he let it unfold. He let it unfold. He's covering number two. Number two runs to the flats. So what they ran was a flat route, corner route, and a hook route, right? Mm -hmm. Levels, basically, to the strong side. 
Yep. Matt Prescott is Pro a veteran Pro. quarterback. He knows where he needs to go with the football. But the manipulation that Brian Branch showed that Prescott made him think that corner route was open. But Brian Branch played what we're all taught to play deep to shallow. Make him throw to the shallow while helping on the deep corner route because that man who's covering the corner, he was playing outside. He was playing inside out. So he's basically inside leverage of that corner. He don't have a chance to make the play on a good pass. But what mm -hmm. Brian Branch did was he played with depth, played with free eyes. He made that Prescott think he was going to commit to that out route. He ended up falling back, picking off the corner route. Voila, magic. There's, magic. That's when the game changed for the worst for the Dallas Cowboys. They can talk about what happened, Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs. No, my friend, if you put up points on the scoreboard, now you have an opportunity to boost the morale of your defense and let them play football. But when mm -hmm. that happened, it's like getting punched in the gut. At some point in time in your life, you've been punched in the gut where you feel like you can't breathe. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. The Cowboys got punched in the gut. They never got off the canvas. Pat they P, never recover. What did you see with Brian Branch making up I that mean, huge play? And Mac, you, you pretty much set the scene and, 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 and gave the fans and the viewers everything that they needed to know. I, my takeaway from it, is the eyes and the vision that Brian Branch had by locating his receiver first. He knew Dak wasn't looking at his guy, understanding the route combination that he was getting um, uh, with the seven and the curl right in front of him. Now, if that was a zone, that would have been that would have worked out perfect because now you have an opportunity to to take the corner mm. and the safety eyes, you know, away from you know where you're trying to throw the ball. So they end up running the man to man um, uh, defense on the defensive side of the ball. Um, uh, Dallas Cowboys did not run a man beater, and like I said, Brian had great eyes by great locate, yeah, uh, taking care of his work first. Understood, understood what common route combination that he was getting. Sloughed off his guy interception because when I first saw the play, I thought it was in the cover too, and then yeah. when I went back and watched, I was like, oh no, nah, they was in man to man. He was just he being, played it like a, a zone. Yeah, huh? He was just he was just being a ball player. Ball player. Mm hmm. Hey, man, that, that's what the great would do. Just be a ball player, man. Yeah. You don't have to line up and just be a robot and do what you're supposed to do. You know where you're going. Mm -hmm. The key is to make them think you don't know where you're going. Right. That's what yep. they do. Hey, that remind me of a play you made. It was a pick. I don't know if it was preseason against mm -hmm. the Chargers in Arizona. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my rookie year. I picked six. The pick, you tipped <laughs> it to yourself. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah, now y'all was like, actually hey, in the zone. Like, about that one? No, that, that was uh, the Rams. That was the round when you picked it to yourself? Tip it yeah, to that yourself. Was, yeah, that was my second interception of that game, too. And you took it to the house? Took it to the crib, baby. That but reminds me, you played with free eyes. You were playing with free eyes, and he was able to kind of manipulate. Yeah. Was it Sam Bradford? Nah, it was Davis. I can't remember Davis' first name. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, it was that Davis. Reminded, right, reminded me a lot. Playing with free eyes, kind of manipulating the quarterback, making him think you're going in mm -hmm. a different direction. We already know, I want you to go here because that's where I'm right. going. To make yep. the play. To make the mm -hmm. play. Hey, man, the great ones have it. And because of that, Brian Branch, and you are Strap of the Week Award winner. Who yes, sir. A huge play. That play right there is what caused the blowout, in my opinion. Sorry, Hugo. Sorry, Dallas Cowboys mm -hmm. fan. But we had to take you back down memory lane to kind of show kids what happened went wrong. Because we had to give our guy, Brian Branch, his award. Yeah, had to. It was all right. Week, we're going to keep giving out the Strap of the Week Award. And once again, that segment is brought to you by Nobody, Nobody baby. <laughs> Brad Pete, great show once again. There's a lot to unpack. We get ready for Thursday night football. Denver, mm -hmm. we gave our picks. And once again, we're going to keep giving you guys quality sound content to enjoy. Pat, see you when I see you. Peace. Yeah, money, 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 money. Ain't that funny? I got haters. Yeah, they watching, but I know they love me. Money, 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 money. Ain't that funny? I got haters. Yeah, they watching, but I know they love me. Riding around the city, plastic cup of C Rock. Bigger and I'm blacker. I am on that Chris Rock.